as you can see, my name is uh, Mentor Stepan, and uh, now I'm working in Grab. And uh, also, I'm an organizer of Kotlin Singapore user group. So if you want some Kotlin stickers, it will be here on my table. Uh, today we will talk about uh, Kotlin Native. So before we start, if you have a notebook and want to try the samples, I will show you. Please install IntelliJ, CLine, and Node.js, or at least IntelliJ or CLine. So in this case, you'll be able to run some samples and try Kotlin Native by yourself. Uh, I will talk about bit about Kotlin. So some things was already covered, but uh, not everything. Kotlin, it's uh, not just a language. It's uh, already a pretty huge platform that supports JVM, JavaScript, and uh, LLVM compilation. Basically, that means that you could use Kotlin to write almost any kind of app possible, from the JVM applications that will run on servers to Android applications, iOS, and embedded systems. So far, uh, as a platform, Kotlin have language, these compilers I just talked about. Also, it have an option to interrupt with uh, Java code, as well as C code, Objective-C, and in the latest version of Kotlin Native, you could even um, access some Swift object and methods. As a platform, it has a lot of IDE plugins. This was already covered in previous talk. All these IDE plugins help you a lot with uh, writing new Kotlin code. And uh, there is a Kotlin annotation processor and many, many more pretty cool tools that will allow you to write your Kotlin code faster and with better quality. So yeah, Kotlin is not limited by these uh, areas, it also runs on, you could compile Kotlin code to run on WebAssembly, which is like new technologies for browser, which will allow you to run apps in browser with native performance. And uh, as a good addition, Gradle also supports Kotlin right now. So for those of you who don't know what is Gradle, Gradle is a pretty powerful build system so to build large applications, um, simple compilation, not enough anymore. And uh, especially on big projects, you need a lot of tooling around that. And Gradle allow you to do that with Kotlin, of course. Yeah, so a bit of spoilers. I will be talking about Kotlin Native today, and uh, it's not officially released yet. It's still the early pre-alpha stage things that works already, it's stable, but still API could change and uh, many of the things that accessible in Kotlin for JVM and Kotlin JS is not available for Kotlin Native yet. Kotlin Native, it's uh, like a platform that will allow you to build Kotlin code using, using uh, LLVM compiler. LLVM, it's uh, so-called low-level virtual machine that used to compile languages like C, C++, uh, Rust, and uh, many others. What it does, it translates your code into very low-level representation. And then there is a compilers for the every platform, including Windows, Linux, uh, iOS, and even Android, that will allow to compile this intermediate representation to the native binaries for the particular platform. What it means in simple words, it just means your code will be running very fast and almost everywhere. One uh, more benefit of Kotlin Native is that since Kotlin already supports a lot of platforms, it's kind of natural that you could share the code between them. For example, on the latest uh, Kotlin Conf, there was a Kotlin Conf app that actually used Kotlin for virtually everything. There is a iOS 
application written in Kotlin. There is Android application written in Kotlin. There is a backend server that also written in Kotlin, and the web app that uh, written in Kotlin as well, and later translated to JavaScript. This is kind of a structure of this project. You will have a common module that contains Kotlin code that's shared across these platforms. It basically means that if you'll need to write web, Android backend, and iOS, you need to write uh, code that necessary for all these platforms, only once. So basically, for some piece of code, you save 75% of effort. Of course, not 75 for now, because you still need to set up the tooling and fight some nasty bugs, but yeah. Guys is working pretty hard on that. And uh, so far, I think it's Kotlin is one of the few, if not the only one platform that allow you to do that. OK. Now I will be running some demo. A bit of spoilers. Uh, this demo could not fully work. As I said, it's still like very early stage. But I will try my best to show it to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me show you the GitHub page. Yes. Basically, this is the project that I was just talking about. This is the Kotlin Conf app. Is it's uh, fully open source, as you can see here. It is. This is Android backend, JavaScript, iOS, web modules that you could run. And yeah, if you want to play with that, just go to this uh, GitHub page, github slash jetbrains slash kotlinconf dash app, and uh, give it a try. So, as you can see, I already did that. So I have this project right here. So now we will uh, try to launch it. Let's uh, start with Android, maybe, and see if it will work. While I'm launching Android app, I'll also, okay, I'll also launch the web app as well. Application run on the Node.js. So, yeah. This one. And also, I will run the backend application. So, oh. sorry, something not working. So yeah, uh, as you could notice here, to build this project, I use Gradle. For the Kotlin native, you could use to build system that currently supported now. One of it is the Gradle, and the second one is uh, the CMake files. So if you really want to use that, you, well, you'll need to choose between Gradle and CMake. I would recommend you to use Gradle for the project that already use Gradle or doesn't use any build tools yet. For the CMake, it would be projects that already use something like C, C++, or other native I could say native languages, because the CMake provides you a better compatibility with uh, C++ environment. 
So now the backend is running and uh, I'm trying once again to run our web server. Yeah. Yay, it's working now. Basically this application, it's uh, just a small app that shows you schedule of talks on Kotlin Com conference. Conference is ended already and this example wasn't updated for around like five months. But still, this whole web application was written in Kotlin. We could go through the source code a little bit. So yeah, I will not go into details of how it's done. The thing is, there is uh, already a lot of libraries for Kotlin JVM and Kotlin Web. Not so much for Kotlin Native yet, because it's not like released. So you could use all these libraries, like and even Java libraries and JavaScript libraries to create your Kotlin applications. Here, for example, this is a Java backend. But if we go into the web, we could see here this, this web application was built using uh, Node.js. And here we could see some React wrappers on top of JavaScript that allows Kotlin to use React APIs to build this UI. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. So if you want to save your lot of time by sharing the business logic and some pieces of code between JVM and JavaScript, you could do that already. It's already supported and working 100% stable. All the features that accessible on a JVM, most of them accessible on the JavaScript. The only difference would be this standard library, it's a bit different. Since Kotlin have pretty good compatibility with Java, it will have like all the Java, all the JDK compatibilities in there. But for JavaScript, it's not true. And if you use some Java code, you need to make sure you will, you only use like Kotlin standard library functions, or you know how to implement the same thing in the JavaScript. It should be pretty simple, and uh, I know a lot of people who already do that, including the guys who develop in Kotlin. So, for now, they're building the IntelliJ ID using Kotlin, all the websites that they launch, like new ones, using Kotlin as well. And uh, yeah, the only problem remains is that how you will like structure your code in the way that you could really reuse this part. So this is why uh, this is why the structure looks uh, like this complex because these three models, common, common JVM, and common JS, it's a containers for reusable code. So you need to know like how you really want to reuse it, and you need to make sure that this code is reusable. Which for like many projects, from my experience, is not true. Mostly developers doesn't think about reusability and just put forever working in there, copying from Stack Overflow. So, yeah. Let's, let's try to launch the Android app. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, Android development, yeah, this is uh, an IntelliJ plugin that supports developing Android apps. In this plugin, you could create the Android emulator, which is basically kind of mobile phone on your desktop device. It emulates a lot of uh, mobile phone, phone functions, including like calls, GPS, Bluetooth, and things like that. So we're launching that. You could drag it from the bottom bezel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The bottom bezel, yeah. Drag it from there. Oh. It changed. Nice. 
Thank you, man. Yeah, haven't used these simulators for a long time already. Okay, now what we'll try to do, so terminate our servers and yeah, using Gradle. We'll just try to compile and install it again. Hmm. Let's see. actually just did that we installed Kotlin application that used code shared across many platforms to our emulator okay, where is it yes this is it okay. so it's pretty nice looking application I could say You could expect like all these fancy Android animations and all native Android components, including like all frameworks that accessible to Java. It's also accessible to Kotlin. So yeah, I wish I could show you the iOS application, but for some reason I can't build that. So this was expected since. Uh, yeah, technology not in production yet. Let me try once again. No, still not working. Yeah, sorry for that, guys. But I hope if you will try it on your own and you have a bit of experience with iOS, which I don't, you could fix this nasty errors and try it by yourself. It would look very close to this application but with all the iOS native components and things like that. The thing with Scotland that um, unlike uh, other languages that try to be like cross-platform and for example like React Native that allows you to use JavaScript and allow you to use single code base that build applications for Android and iOS approach taken by Kotlin is a bit different. You Actually, you can use single code base, but for now it would be like pretty tough and you need to do a lot of groundwork to do that. But the main idea is to integrate with existing ecosystems. For example, if you use Kotlin for the JavaScript apps, you will be using uh, Node.js and NPM to get the libraries. And then you could use it from Kotlin. You will not have some cross-platform libraries. But yeah, of course there would be. It's possible to do, but it's uh, like not the official proposed way, I would say. So far, since Android is pretty young, so it was first, like alpha version was released around 2012, but still like for technology this big that covers this many platforms, it's very early stage, I could say. And integration with existing ecosystems for me looks like a very good strategy because you don't need to build every single new library on your own you could just go and use what's already there and this is why you're able to just introduce Kotlin for example in Java project piece by piece like rewriting maybe one two files and it still will work same would work for JavaScript. If you have big JavaScript project and you want to use Kotlin, it will work that way. You will get few Kotlin files, put in your project, modify, build script a little bit to support Kotlin, and you're done. You could write your apps and like slowly, if you will like it, you'll transition in Kotlin. If you don't, you just remove the files. Yeah. 
but I don't suggest that. You know. Kotlin is very good. Okay, so how many of you have the laptops? Are you running this uh, <laughs> demos? Okay. Okay, no worries. Um, yeah. The purpose of this talk was to build something simple using the Kotlin native. But I think we will not go this way now. And uh, what I could do, I could show you some simple projects that will give you some perception of what the options you have using Kotlin native. I will use C-Line IDE. It's uh, very similar to IntelliJ or Android Studio. It built using the same IntelliJ platform and provide to you the same amount of uh, cool shortcuts, auto completion, refactorings that makes your life like much easier as a developer. Here I want to show you one of the samples actually the few samples first would be uh, C URL how many of you use C URL in your console nice so basically this is uh, the C library that also sometimes distributed as a binary to allow you to execute some HTTP calls from your console and uh, this project is basically the serial wrapper, serial wrapped by Kotlin. It demonstrates how you could use existing C libraries from your Kotlin native application. The first thing to do is to download C line. Of course, you could do it uh, manually just using like console tools, but yeah. So far, I can't recommend that because documentation is pretty bad and in many places it's just missing. So it's pretty hard to like figure out how to do it. So yeah, unless you want to read source codes of these tools and yeah, really get into depth of it. Uh, the basic idea is there is a tool that generates Kotlin APIs for your C libraries. This is called C interrupt. What we need to do first is uh, we know the library that you, we want to have in our Kotlin native project and we go and create this .dev file. .dev file will um, describe the headers that we want to use in Kotlin application. Here for example we want to use uh, C URL headers. This is some like more complex option for that that allow you to propose some path where the serial serial library currently placed and the platform that you want to use for this library. So after we did that we could create CMake file. What we will add it there? We'll add the center up structure here that will describe it. Okay. Now we have this dev file and we want this dev file really to be executed by Cinterop tool and generate this binning for us. Yeah. We could apply some compiler options here as well. Then using Conan C executable we will define our project. So so far definition is pretty simple. We have a name, we have uh, our sources address. With with just a directory name here, product C URL. We define the libraries that we'll use, and again some options for the compiler. After we did that, we will have this uh, import libc URL that will actually let me see lead us to all these automatically generated Kotlin bindings. So this is uh, kind of headers, but for Kotlin, and it translated from the C header. We could access any global variables defined here, and any C functions. 
And if you have already experienced with Kotlin, these definitions would look, look super weird. This is because Kotlin uh, originally it's very high level language. It doesn't allow you to work directly with the memory, to interact with pointers, to cast like value to the pointer and things like that. It's uh, just prohibited for Java and uh, even uh, like not possible in JavaScript. But here, what uh, the main challenge was, it's to allow Kotlin to do this low level operations. And yeah, I hope someday there would be a lot of high level libraries for interaction with C libraries in Kotlin native, but it's not there yet. And uh, if you will use Kotlin native, you need to prepare to know everything about C, which I don't. <laughs> So, yeah, but it doesn't stop me from giving you the stuff today. Um, yeah, so the main trick here is uh, to really find the piece of C code and try to convert it one to one in Kotlin. So, this is uh, not an example of conversion, but more an example of how you will create Kotlin APIs for some library written in C. Yeah, and here, here is the definition of these APIs. I will not go into that because it, like for me, it doesn't make any sense. So, if I want to use some high-level library, I'll just use the Kotlin JVM. But yeah, here what happening is that. We create our APIs and we just call it here. And yeah, I'm not sure how this uh, APIs is structured in C URL, but here we see pretty nice, very close to Java looking code that will allow you will allow us to use C URL. But if we will go to our next example, which is uh, some simple socket server you will see there is a lot of magic in here first thing we will notice is what we really have to do in C is uh, some function called init sockets but to be honest I can't call this a function it's more like a procedure but in Kotlin there is no procedure so it's everything you will call will be functions we need to init sockets which do some like black magic underneath some memory mapping and things like that that will allow us then to use this uh, pretty interesting I could say declaration called memscope for Kotlin JVM and for Kotlin JavaScript there is automatic memory management and the garbage collection. It means that you don't need to care about how you allocate your memory and how you free memory allocate it after that. All the objects will be garbage collected for you. If you don't need that, garbage collector will go and uh, just free this memory. But for Kotlin native, uh, since it's a really early stage, there is only one option available for now, and it's memory, uh, uh, manual memory management. You will need to really go into depth of how the memory is managed in low-level libraries and really like understand how this low-level libraries works, which again I don't. So it's nice to have this mem scoped declaration that will automatically deallocate all allocated memory at the end of uh, these curly braces. So yeah, pretty nice. And also, as you can see here, the code completion, it's a bit broken. This is uh, my fault because I kind of created project structure that's not really supported for the C line yet. Uh, basically, this is three separate project for purpose of demonstration, but C line supports only one of them. Hopefully, I still could compile that, but as a side effect, it, keep telling me that this code is not valid 
which is not true. So this in this example, what we'll do, we'll use uh, default C APIs for the available for Linux and OS X to open the socket and uh, start listening to that. And yeah, what we'll do, first we'll create a socket here with some magic flags, I could say. Then, then we'll call some magic functions again. The thing is, the what we care about is this bind, listen, and accept uh, procedures we will call. So, this sequence of calls telling us that, okay, this is the socket server. We will allocate the socket and uh, nobody else will be able to do that anymore. So we'll just keep listening to the messages. Then, again using some uh, magic calls that I will probably explain later, we will just receive some message and uh, send it back using this uh, send calls. And yeah, we could actually See how it works right now. I already compiled this project, and yeah, fortunately, it compiles unlike the project for iOS. Okay. Yeah, I could launch uh, my Echo server, and uh, using the separate console, I could use. Uh, Telnet. Okay. Yes. Telnet console two. That uh, basically is pretty simple. What it does, it sends sends the message to the socket you specify. In our case, it's like four thousand. You could put here, hello, and we see the response. And also here we could see that we received this message. It took me a few hours to figure out how to convert uh, raw bytes into string in Kotlin na native, but yeah, I think it worked it. So, the guys actually plan to release Kotlin native uh, by the end of this year, and I hope they will cover like many standard library functions that are already available for Kotlin JavaScript, but now to do some simple operation that you used to do pretty easily, in Java, in Kotlin native could be pretty hard, but could be pretty easy as well. But yeah, most likely pretty hard. What we could also try to do, and uh, is there anyone who have a lot of experience with C? Oh, then you could help me, because I, I can't launch this. Uh, next application that's supposed to emulate telnet for some reason I'm getting uh, segmentation fault every time I do something and since I don't have like much experience with C for me it's pretty hard to figure out how to fix that <laughs> so yeah um, What else I have here? Yeah. If you really interested to know, like really how it works, you could also refer this. Uh, yes, GitHub page with uh, Kotlin native samples. There is a lot of them, and you could find like uh, <coughs> all things that works for now in Kotlin native <coughs> here, including native activities in Kotlin, GTK bindings, uh, HTML5, even OpenGL and uh, Windows 32 bindings. But to be able to compile that, you will uh, need to spend a lot of time for now. So, what I'm thinking about here now, as uh, the 
would show you a little bit of uh, cool thing that you could do in Kotlin and possibly in future it would be available in Kotlin native mm. to do that you could actually use uh, two things there is a very good site called try Kotlin yeah, try Kotlin yeah, this one for those of you who don't want to install these IDEs and just want to try Kotlin this is a pretty good place to start there is also a lot of examples that uh, you could compile for JVM or the JavaScript and yeah you could like do your first month of Kotlin only using this tool but if you want some uh, more advanced code completion and some fancy stuff you could use uh, read evaluate print, print loop console here and uh, in IntelliJ IDEA ID or if you have Android Studio you could use Android Studio for that it's also available in there here you could uh, experiment I even use uh, use it on real project because this is a very fast way of prototyping and uh, in this console all the classes you use in your project is available so for example here let's see what we have in uh, Kotlin application mm. yeah nothing much but if we will add some library in there we could just call it from this console and let's say we want to create some function like simple one okay uh, yeah, I'll just enter the presentation mode yes switch to Android As you remember from the previous talk, Kotlin is very smart. And here, even in so basic example, we see like very interesting things that not available for Java. Here, the type is automatically inferred. And even in IDE, it will just show you the hint for you to understand what's going on faster. Sometimes when you have inferred type and then you call some function and type again inferred and again inferred, it's pretty easy to lose the track of like what object you have. But IDE again is very smart and it just helps you with that. Here we see this, this hello is string and moment I change it to lem, it said okay that's int right now. So it's pretty close to dynamic languages but it's still statically typed and it's still do a lot of work for you and catch tons of errors. Now we could just call this function. Yeah. Hello. What else we could do? How many of you are familiar with functional programming? Okay. So Kotlin such a cool language is that it supports a lot of different paradigms. You could write your entire app using like procedure style. You could have a high level function, it will call another high level function and basically that's it. So in this case we will still call it function because in Kotlin we only have functions but in reality it would be like procedures. Also you could use object oriented programming, you could create objects Pretty properties for that, add some business logic, and yeah, this is uh, what most of the people do. And uh, what some of the people do, and uh, now this, I could say, self programming became more and more popular, it's uh, to use functional programming in your apps. You could do it uh, in Java as well, not so easy, but still a lot of like functional concepts you still could implement and use and uh, it will work for 
all applications backend android desktop or even if you run java on embedded systems it will also work so in kotlin there is a lot of tools that will allow you to do this functional programming easier let's say we have the same like uh, a function and uh, what we could do is we could create some function b for example and this function b will accept the reference to the function a Oops. so why we want to do that uh, this is doesn't seem to make any sense but more you use it it like start to getting more and more sense so same same as uh, object oriented programming once you started you're like oh why you need a subject because i just could run some simple procedure it will do same thing but here the interesting thing that uh, we could do for example we want to call it 10 times and this is another like pretty cool Kotlin feature called ranges so basically if you want to get some numbers from 1 to 10 it's just a two dot separator that will create a range create a range for us and then we could do okay we could call this uh, function we provide here like 10 times why is it working looks like some uh, issue with this one now when we have a and b functions we could call b function and pass function a in there A return string. This is why static typing is good. In JavaScript, I could never even notice this error. Okay, now we updated our B function and call A function again. We call B function and pass the A function there. So this is, um, I call it four dots. Oh, okay, it's not very usable, right? This is four dots operator that basically translates our function to the function reference, and uh, this is something you could do in Java as well. And this concept also available in JavaScript and in Kotlin native. You could also do that, which you can't in C. So that's why you could think, okay, I will just get a C library, create the Kotlin wrapper around these APIs, and then use some fancy functional stuff with this uh, nasty procedure calls. So, and now, once we call it, oh, okay. We need to print it. And this is one more cool Kotlin feature that you could use like extension functions like let that will allow you to do some chain calls. In uh, Java, if you want to pass some variable in like one method and then pass the result of this method to another method, what you usually do for the each line, you create a variable, assign the result of call to this variable, then do it again and again, maybe five, ten times sometimes. And uh, in Kotlin, there is a ways to avoid that. So basically, instead of uh, doing uh, something like this, print and pass their function result, I could call let and 
both great tinder and this is more natural because i execute function first and only then i print it but when you try to write this code in all object oriented or procedure style you should do it in reverse so you basically need to know what you will do last and put this last operation first and then you will allow to do that and uh, it uh, doesn't really help to better understand your code but in Kotlin you could uh, do the opposite you could chain your calls in the way you intend to do it not like you force by language so here we will call the function get the result and then we just print it Yay! Finally it works. <laughs> so, yeah, this is like one of the reasons uh, I really like Kotlin. And uh, yeah, one of the reasons why I organized this Kotlin user group community here in Singapore. It's uh, because I really believe that this language makes uh, your life as a developer easier and it allows you to do things that is more logical and uh, I could say more natural for you not like Java that force you to do the only way possible and uh, in Kotlin much more things is possible and this is uh, for a developer like makes your day-to-day -day job more interesting since you like find new and new ways of uh, get better in how you do things okay so we basically covered uh, extension functions and uh, what else? Ranges, function references, things like that. Okay, another pretty cool feature of Kotlin is, uh, yeah, let me clear this. is sealed classes and uh, this is not the thing you will like immediately start to use because it's cool it's uh, the thing that uh, you will start to use when you feel that you need it so and uh, sometimes something bad should happen that you will say oh, okay I should be using that so I prefer just to use sealed classes to not be cached by this kind of errors so what is sealed classes? It's uh, some uh, concept that's pretty similar to enums, but it's uh, much more powerful in a way that you could uh, define much more things. Enums is very restricted and in many, many times I uh, catch myself that, okay, in Java, in this case, it's... Uh, would be pretty good to use enums but for some reason I can't really do that because I need to extend some class or some other issue that I can't really fix because language not allow me to do that in Kotlin you could use sealed classes and what it means basically you create the class and create uh, few other classes that inherit this class but that's it you restrict another pieces of code to be able to extend these classes and this is pretty important for uh, a few reasons first you see that okay all the inheritors of this class in the same file and it could be only here and i really could see like what these classes intend to do and second one it allows you to do some additional checks on top of uh, the static code analysis that's done by compiler. I, I, I will show you what does it mean. Let's say we have some sealed class, let's say action. And uh, yeah, in Kotlin, that's it. This is uh, the real class. In uh, Java, it would be like abstract class with. Uh, like single constructor and that's it. In Kotlin you don't even need to declare anything else. So the syntax it's very simple and clean. 
now what we will do we will create some uh, classes that extend this action let's say login and we'll make them objects to make it more like enums let's say we have like simple application and on the first page you have login and exit actions and this is it we create our seal class and now what we could do we could make a processor for the sections as you could see here like uh, the biggest difference from Java is the ordering so you first write a name of your variable and then you write the type of it so this is uh, done because of the type inference so most of the time you don't even need to write this part so this is why it came last so to allow you to avoid it inside this process what we'll actually do we'll get some result variable and this result variable we will get from when expression so when expression is pretty powerful thing it's uh, something similar to switch cases in Java but when we use it with sealed class it allows us to do very interesting thing let's say now we have an action and we want to compare it with login You don't have to write this uh, like action.login but inside this console it's only work this way. Okay, and here This is, looks pretty similar to Java, but the it, interesting thing is, since we use this uh, sealed class, in the moment you will add new action here. Mm. I don't know, switch user. immediately see that this code is not longer valid so what happened that we added more safety checks using Kotlin language features in Java to do something like this you will have to use enums but let's say action have some field And immediately all the actions here will need to implement this like we'll just put it empty one and this behavior no longer possible in enums because enums can't have uh, can't extend existing classes so for this we could possibly say like okay I could create enum and then pass to like every enum some value in the constructor. But if we want to do something more complex, it would be not possible. But here you're not limited by any limitations of the enums and like using these actions, you could say, okay. Login also have something like um, yeah, and uh, 
here the interesting thing I could do is that I could declare some of actions as classes and some of actions as objects and it will still work and uh, all these uh, type checks would be done as well which again not really possible with enums so here I still have this error it said okay you captured only two of three possible actions you will have to add one more and why it's important because especially on a big projects where when you change some very basic stuff that built that used to build a lot of like more complex thing in a project this kind of switches usually in java have a default case or like um, some yeah yeah basically that's it you or it use some if else branches and the moment you add something in uh, some basic object you will not have like any errors and only way for you it's uh, just to search across all the project and fix all the thing you find and hope that not nobody else will raise some PR where this case will not be handled and sealed classes allows you to avoid this kind of errors when you will you need to change something across all the project but you forgot to do it in a few places here it would be the compilation error so until you fix that possible errors you will not be able to compile the project and uh, this is a pretty powerful thing when you will use Kotlin please use it it will save you a lot of time interesting uh, feature of Kotlin is uh, lambda with receivers so what does it mean this concept is not available from Java or JavaScript but do available in few other languages and uh, I will show you how you could use that let's say we have uh, some string buffer completion will not work but believe me it have this append function and we could append many different things and this is how I usually do it in uh, Java we just copy code and keep adding some values in there the moment we build it we will get this uh, string but for me it seems like a lot of duplicated code how we could fix it in Kotlin like and uh, many of my colleagues would say like why well, need to fix that I, I used to do it in Java for last 15 years what the point but Still in Kotlin, we could save some. Yeah, you could save some time and uh, amount of operations you need to do by using lambda with receivers. So, how it will work? We will call some Kotlin function called apply, and uh, what this function does inside this function, we will basically, I could say, switch the context and inside apply now code behave like we are inside this uh, builder class which in Java it's not quite possible 
but here it means that this is our builder and we could avoid using this inside apply what we will do I'll just copy this code and just remove our builder dot strings this is yeah, still red but believe me it will work as you can see result is same but what happened is we saved us a lot of bullet plate I could say which doesn't seem like bullet plate but once you start use Kotlin and start use uh, functions like apply or we could replace it with run for example you will see that you could really save a lot of code and it doesn't uh, seem like a big win but believe me during the code review you will appreciate that because here now it's much simpler to understand example again is pretty simple but sometimes we have uh, something like I don't know um, in Android for example con context dot resources dot um, what else let's say get string. Hmm? Get, string. get string yeah okay it would be oh, it still would be get string and when you see this thing copied like few times right and inside some function like set and let's say user info and this is looks ugly what um, many of developers will do just extract this into some like variable uh, up here <coughs> where is my code <laughs> yeah let's say like wall resources give it some short name so nobody else could figure it out later and then replace this with resources but it still looks ugly it doesn't solve the main problem right so here when we could eliminate even this this is again much cleaner and uh, much more enjoyable to see okay let me give you some bit more details about how it works to make it work with what we need to do is we actually need to create um, our function and here send this function this uh, syntax that a bit tricky we could say okay we have uh, string builder okay yeah string builder dot and after this dot we put some how to say yeah we put um, the type of lambda in there so it basically mean that this lambda will be executed in string builder context as we saw here for example and then we just create a string builder just call function f with the string builder as an argument so even if we not like have it here we don't need to care about like where it came from this function will take care of it for us maybe you have some questions already and uh, yeah I could figure out what to tell you about Kotlin. 
Yes. In the previous slide, you have a uh, first slide like here. You mean the CMake? Oh, CMake. Yeah. Macro, yes. The C intro. So where is that macro now? Uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Uh, mm, I could say this is uh, Kotlin native extension for CMake, but I'm I'm not sure if it sounds correct. But this is like from my limited understanding of how the native uh, CMake works. So then, from Kotlin, you have uh, extend the uh, because I for sure I know those macro not from the native uh, yeah, CMake. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, this is like Kotlin CMake module, and uh, I think it should have something to do with that. But probably all this uh, definition is somewhere here. Yeah, I, I could be wrong, but it, it seems like that. So yeah. it is provided by... by my yeah, so basically here if you using CLine and you create new project, and choose uh, Kotlin, for example, with the hello world. It will create all this uh, structure for you. Yeah. Including uh, Kotlin CMake module. Which I guess provides all these extensions to work with uh, Kotlin native. Currently, only C drop is possible, not with C++. Uh, so basically, with C++. So let's this is a yeah, this is a good question. Uh, probably not yet, but if C++ library expose uh, like C like APIs, it would be available. So it, I I guess it depends on the type of header you provide. If this is a C++ library and uh, C header, you will be get all this function. So basically, for Kotlin, it doesn't uh, it doesn't care. What happens to the standard library where Kotlin is? Is that available in the native side? It's available, but not fully. For example, if I'll try to do Yeah, I could think about any like particular example, but uh, yeah, Kotlin native library is quite different from uh, Kotlin standard library for JavaScript and JVM. And the truth is that all these three libraries, it's uh, quite different. Because let's say Kotlin standard library for JVM rely heavily on existing JavaScript APIs. And the Kotlin JavaScript library rely on existing Java, uh, yeah, Kotlin JVM rely on JVM APIs and Kotlin JavaScript rely on JavaScript APIs. And uh, sometimes it's pretty similar and in this case the APIs for Kotlin standard library would be same. But in case uh, API is very different, it would be again a different API for Kotlin, Kotlin standard, standard library. Yeah. But still, I guess it should be already at least few libraries available that will unify this behavior and you could use some functions that you built to extend these standard libraries to allow you to use the same APIs on both platforms. Okay. But from my experience, standard library for Kotlin native, it's the smallest one. And uh, another like difficulty, at least for me, since uh, Kotlin native built to interrupt the C, for the every platform you will be having like different, uh, I could say, system libraries, right? Because like for Windows it would be like Win32, and for OS X and Linux it would be OS X. So uh, APIs would be completely different. And so far, since it's a very early stage, there is no like. No libraries that will unify this, and I don't, I don't think it's even possible. So, as an example, if I had a 
Kotlin project in which I was using some extensions for, let's say, array flattening or something like that, which are in the Kotlin standard library. Mm. And I then targeted the JS run. It's likely it will not work because uh, some of them are not there. Most likely it will work because it, if your extensions using only standard library functions that available on both, both platforms, I mean like functions and the classes, if it's available on both platforms, your extension will be again available on both platforms as well. Is, is that a express motivation for the JetBrains screen to have the standard library? Yeah, yeah. On, on, on uh, as far as I know, they're working pretty hard to really extend this uh, standard library to the point where it would be very, very close on every platform they support it. I have a question. Yes. So, uh, wanted to ask, like, I played around with Kotlin a bit, mm -hmm. but uh, the thing is, uh, I can only write the business logic. You said it's cross, cross platform, right? So, yeah. but right now, I can only write the business logic in Kotlin. So, yes. for the UI part, I still have to like uh, write different set of yes. codes. Yes. And do you think there's a possibility that the UI part will be common as well? That's similar to what yeah. Flutter yeah, is? Yeah, it, it's actually possible since uh, Kotlin Native already have uh, pretty good support of OpenGL. You could uh, build, let's say, your own library for UI, and then it would be like cross-platform across Java, JavaScript, and native, since all the platforms now support OpenGL. I mean, I, I was aiming at Swift because like, for oh, iOS devices. Swift. Yeah. For Swift, it would be, I could say, pretty hard to achieve, because you will have to bind if you you have to first like design the same API to be able to handle like every cases of particular view, like for example you have a button 